Guys, again, we'll continue with the break proportionation. I think everybody knows that most of the cars have got disc brakes in the front, drum brakes in the rear. Even when they give an option of disc brakes, they give front wheel with disc brakes and rear wheel with, rear wheel with drum brakes. Only in some sports bikes, only in some sports bikes you have both are disc brakes. But usually they actually keep the front disc larger because the braking effect should be more. The rear brake disc diameter is quite less. So understand that the force, the braking force that that we have from the front and the rear wheels are different. So from engineering perspective, we will try to find out how much of brake proportion has to, so much of brake proportion has to, nation has to be done. So there is an engineering calculation here. When I asked uh, the SAE students, they said uh, they actually take the brake proportionation as 60% uh, front and 40% rear. How, uh, how I asked? They don't know. So it is the way. Suppose if anybody is in SAE, you can help them. So they have decided. So basically for that you need uh, some data related to the, wheel, the vehicle wheel base. The vehicle wheel base. And then you should know then you should know at what height is the CG. You have the CG here. CG will be at some height here. You need to know this edge. And that, that CG from either the front wheel and the rear wheel, how much it is. Now you should know this. Okay. Now you can know either from this and this. So let us say this is C. Usually this is B. I don't need this B. And you can call this as L. You can call this as L. And you can call this CG height as H. You can call the CG height as S, H. So with this, with this details, you can find out what is the percentage of uh, brake that you need to put on the front and what is the percentage of the rear. For that again you need what is called as very important factor which actually gives you maximum braking force that is mu. You should know also the value of mu. If you know the value of mu by whatever 0 0.6, 0 0.7 or 0 0.8 Last time we gave 0.8 which is too much. So that is for a very good tire. Usually for tires it is like 0.6. If you need to have very high coefficient then you need to have a soft compound tires where they act, they almost give you very low mileage. Maybe every 5000, 10,000 kilometers you need to replace. Okay. So mu, you have some value here and with this. Now guys, okay, I will actually give you an example. Here is an inclined uh, slope. Here is an inclined slope and here you have something like this. Here is something like this. Do you think it will slide? No. Uh, it depends. It depends on because this is actually mg or the weight. This is the weight which is equal to mg and there is some, there is some component of the weight which is actually going along the plane. If this is theta here, if this is theta here, this is theta. So then, then what is this? Is it sin theta or cos theta? This is opposite side by, this is mg, wait. This is sin theta. So sin theta is this component. So this is actually mg sin theta. So mg sin theta component acts along this. And therefore, if the friction produced, that is mu into the weight of this. If this is suppose it is mu into w, if it is more than, if it is more than mg sin theta, then it stays. Suppose if it becomes, then it just starts to slide. If this becomes less, then the friction is less, then it starts sliding. Because this component is the component of force which is actually trying to slide this. Imagine this is sliding like this. Imagine this is sliding like this. Because we have put some oil here, we have put some oil here. Guys, I am trying to give this example to make you feel, make you feel this problem. We have put some oil. Suddenly there is no oil here. There is some dirt here. There is some sticky substance here. But it will start sliding here. It will come here. It will fall. That's common sense, no? That's like tripping. You actually, uh, your foot gets actually stuck to something, you fall forward, no? In the same way. So, when you are falling or even if it is not completely stuck, there is some friction, it starts slowing down. So there will be a force generated. 
that force is nothing but m into a where a is not acceleration a is deceleration if you try to decelerate fast because of the friction here it will try to produce a force which is at this center of gravity because here you got this breaking force which is again equal to mu into w okay so you can say that this m into a is equal to mu into w because if you try to decelerate because of this force the same force will be generated at this point there are some youtube videos which doesn't explain anything it gives you some equations you will be thinking how this equation came from where did this equation come okay so you can say that maximum force that could be generated at the point of center of gravity are two forces one is because of the vehicle weight one is because of the vehicle weight the other is a forward force it is like actually tripping force which actually makes the vehicle go forward because there is so much of breaking force happening here so that breaking force is mu into w that will be equal to m into a so that mu into w force can be taken here mu into w can be taken here which is actually m into a okay so there are actually three forces i mean there are actually two forces acting here one is the weight of the vehicle other is mu into w okay now we will try to find out what is the what is the force coming on the front wheel what is the maximum force that would come on the rear wheel rear wheel means both the wheels front wheel means both the front wheels i can say axle rf is the weight coming on the front axle rr is the weight coming on the rear axle so we we'll now just do some basic physics what is the physics here so we try to hinge this point hinge this weak point and actually try to see the sum of the moments we take that the sum of the moments about the rear wheel is zero sum of the moments for the rear wheel is zero because the car is not rolling completely it is the most stable on the road which means that some of this moments are balancing okay so therefore there are actually several forces acting out of those forces since i'm taking here at this point this force has no value because at this point itself the force is acting force into zero distance is zero okay so then the next force is rf into acting at the distance of l about this point it is the inch point it is the inch point one force is acting like this and the distance is l okay so i will say this rf into l that is acting on clockwise or anti clockwise clockwise or anti clockwise it is clockwise it is acting clockwise this weight is acting here this weight is acting here acting like this downwards at what distance from the rear wheel cc at a distance c what is force into distance w into c is it clockwise or anti clockwise this is anti clockwise so since it is clockwise i make it as plus since it is anti clockwise since it is anti clockwise like this i make it as minus so I, so i write it as w into c is it only two forces or there is one more force which force mu into w because the center of gravity is here why do i fall suppose if i am actually skating when i am skating suddenly there is some sand on the so i start to slow down when i slow down the effect of slowing down force comes on body mass into deceleration that force comes from, from where from my head down. it actually comes from the center of gravity of my body that force acts like this that force is actually v into w acting through this point it is the reason i fall forward i don't fall backwards okay there is acting forwards that is v into w acting at a height of h h so that h is at what height from this point again h only okay so is it clockwise or anti clockwise acting like this about this point is it clockwise or anti clockwise like this or like this anti clockwise so this is anti clockwise minus mu w into h so all these three moments we'll see that the car doesn't roll forward they are in the balance because there is some reaction force in the front okay so you can definitely find out rf 
So RF is the reaction force of the front wheel. So you take this on to the right side. So that is W into right of the vehicle into C plus mu into W into H divided by L. This formula gives you the reaction force of the front wheel. Okay. <coughs> now you try to find out the reaction force in the rear wheel. So reaction force in the rear wheel is what? W minus RF. Right or wrong? So here, if you try to put some values here, if you try to put some values, so how do I find the percentage here? So if I try to, I suppose if I have to do this in the other way. Right now, this formula gives what is the weight coming on the RF, the maximum weight that would come on the RF. Okay. So here, how would I actually find out in terms of this? Okay. Now, let us compare it to the total weight. And let us compare it to the total weight. So, this total, so you can say that percentage of brake on front wheel should be equal to RF divided by the total weight. Suppose if all of the weight is coming to the front wheel, that means 100% braking in the front wheel. You should actually, you know, should not provide any brake to the rear wheels at all. You can understand at all. So that means with complete 100% full brake, all the braking force will be generated in the front wheel because there is no weight on the rear wheel at all. If RF becomes equal to W. So brake proportionation will be like 100% at some high acceleration. Okay. So, so RF is given by this equation, divided by W. So how do you divide this guys? So here, so what you can do here, you can take this W out now. You can, here you can take this W out. Then you can write this as what? C plus U into H divided by L. So when you put this here, so this becomes W into C plus U H by L divided by W. W W cancels out. So what you are left with is this value, which gives the proportionation to the front wheel. So this gives percentage of brake on front wheel. So that means if this value of C is higher, so that means if this CG starts shifting to front and front, then brake percentage on the front should be more. And also mu H. So that means if the height of the CG becomes more and quotient of friction becomes more, then the weight starts to shift to the front wheel more. And what is actually trying to keep it to the rear wheel? L. L. So if L is more, then it is good. It will try to keep the weight to the rear wheel also. So you can see here percentage proportionation, brake proportionation to front wheel is given by C into mu H divided by L. So you can actually you can actually take some uh, values now because if I actually tell this you don't understand. Can you give a value for uh, a vehicle? L is how much for a vehicle? Consider L as three meters. Consider L as three meters. CG will, C, CG is it close to the front wheel or the rear wheel? Suppose if it is a front engine and if there are no rear passengers. So usually CG will be here. CG is not fixed. When passengers sh shift, uh, so suppose if there are any use, there are actually three rows of seats, then CG will definitely shift back. So CG you can actually keep it anywhere here. Yeah? If you want to keep it exactly in, okay, so exactly in between, it will become 1.5. So so this L will L will be three meters. Then this V will be 1.5 meters. So I will actually use this equation here. So that is equal to C is 1.5. Mm -hmm. So what is mu is? How much mu shall I take? 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0.6. 0.6 into H. You now what is the height of CG in cars? Where do you think? Now what is the height of car? Will it be? I mean, will you be sitting at this side in car? Yes. Or slightly higher? You will have a platform, but you will not sit like this. You no, know, like a bench. 
when you sit, you know, I mean, you usually see it will be in our this height maybe because there is more of engine chassis and everything. It will actually pull down the center of gravity. What do you think is this CG in a car? Is it Car height is only this much. Yes. Car is height only this much. All the engine, the chassis, everything will be like this. Oh, I should be in the camera. So the car is about this much. So CG engine will be this much. So it could be, what is the height? One meter. One meter? Yes, one meter is too good. Sorry, one meter is actually, sorry, one meter is too bad. It should be less than one meter. So okay, so let us say point eight something. So let us say point eight. So point eight. So point eight meters. Divided by, so this is one meter, one point five meter. So divided by L. So L is how much one? Three meters. Okay. So what do you is this? So 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 